I'm back. Finally. Uh, <laughs> now, how, how's it like working for boss? <laughs> huh? Yeah. I do have a boss. Um, I'm kind of my own boss, but, you know. <laughs> I did like that. Yeah. How's working for boss? Better benefits. <laughs> yeah, so so since this, what the hell has it been? A Six year. Months? A year. No, it, yeah, it has. Because it was right before Summer Nam. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Holy cow. Yeah, it's been a year. Man, oh man. Flies by, man. Yeah. I swear, once you have children, it gets even faster. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why the correlation, it's something to do with having kids in the space-time continuum speeds up. <laughs> I think it has something to do with that. Or maybe it's the fact that I'm older. Hair loss and <laughs> stress and, yeah. I don't know about hair loss. I still got, I, st I could have yeah. the mane. Yeah, I got, I got <laughs> You got a reverse yarmulke. I do. <laughs> I've been nurturing that guy, <laughs> nurturing it nice <laughs> and slow. So, uh, some people on Facebook. Okay. I remember that. Remember that place? <laughs> I do remember Facebook. Yeah, I remember Facebook. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> that's all funny. Maybe, you know, the, by the time this comes out, Pokemon Go will probably be out of date. <laughs> right. Probably be like, oh, that was the last thing. You know, right. whatever. But um, I saw somebody put something on there. They're like, I can't stand these people doing Pokemon Go and wasting all their time. Can't you see they're, I'm an adult and I have other things to do, like bitch about it on Facebook? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Somebody's always mad about something. Okay, go ahead. No, I agree, man. Uh, let's see. So, Jeffrey No. New. No. Je Jeff. Jeffrey. <laughs> Jeffrey. Jeffrey asked why you're switching from Fendry type guitars to Gibson y type stuff lately. Man, it's just different flavors. It's kind of like I love steak, mm -hmm. but every now and again I want chicken. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I know that sounds stupid, but... Yeah, I found like, yeah, like we were talking about that earlier. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been playing a lot more Strats and Les Paul type stuff than Telecasters mm -hmm. lately. Which is crazy. That's crazy talk. Yeah, yeah, I never would have done it. In fact, but, you know, a year ago, I despised Stratocasters. I told you, if you just play a good one. <laughs> you can't go like... And yes, the funny thing about Strats, my favorite Strat right now, I own two Don Gross Retro Classics. I bet one of them's a $3,000 guitar. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't know. You know, I was, Don's been really good to me and he treated me really well on my last one. My favorite Strat that I've been playing now is my $100 Squire mm -hmm. that I got in 1998, or 96, which is the year I started playing yeah. guitars, my first ever guitar. It's funny you say that. I have a $100 Squire Strat that I love as well. I know, man. <laughs> and I wish I had it now because the neck, like this thing is relicked. And when I say relic, I mean I played the crap out of it for 20 years, and it looks the way it looks. Right. Took you 20 years to relic it. That exactly, way. <laughs> exactly. Overnight, 20 years overnight. But um, so you're, you're offering that as a service now, though, right? Yeah, yeah. just oh, let oh. me borrow your guitar for 20 yeah. years. <laughs> but no, the, the main thing. There's a couple reasons with um, with with the, the the change to. Basically, I finally found a Les Paul that I fell in love with, and mm -hmm. it has a huge baseball butt neck. And I'm thing that. Uh. Oh, there it is. Right here. Let me see. Is this going to pop? I don't know. Yep, but it sure does. <laughs> Oops. It'll be fine. But, uh, but yeah, this thing, you know, most of the time when you find a Les Paul that has the big baseball bat neck on it, they're three to $5,000. And, right. and that's just, sorry, I know the word boutique gets thrown out a lot, but like, that's too much to pay for a guitar, in my opinion. You know, and, and if you have the money to do it, that's vintage money. That's what right. I call it. That's vintage guitar money. But um, this is just a 2012 Les Paul Traditional, and it's got that huge neck on it. And I don't know, it it came from Sweetwater. I don't know if it was like an exclusive to Sweetwater does or not. Does your G-string stay in tune? It does. Really? <laughs> Trade you. <laughs> See? Wow. But uh, but Crazy. no, I finally found one that I fell in love with, and I've always liked the sound of them, but I just can never afford one. Mm -hmm. Finally was able to afford one that was mid- <laughs> The light just fell down. That's awesome. <laughs> I ruin things. First it's guitars, now it's lights. But, uh, and the thing too is I've been playing a lot of rock lately, and it's kind of hard to rock with a Strat. Yeah, it's a totally different type of rock. You know, it, right, exactly. Um, I've been playing in a 90s rock band, which, you know, is awesome. Never realized all the little bitty guitar parts that's stuck mm -hmm. in those songs. And a lot of it too yeah, is... I like all that stuff. It overdrives an amp a little harder. Mm -hmm. Humbuckers just push amps harder, mm -hmm. and I like the way that my pedals respond to humbuckers after listening to them respond to Stratocasters right. for so many years. Right. It's almost but like... It's, it's almost like buying all new pedals. Exactly. You don't... Yeah. You know, you didn't change a thing on your board, but it's completely different mm -hmm. tones. And it's... 
that and it makes you play different. It does. You yeah. know, I'm gonna play different licks on this and I play it on a strat, you know. But then again, like I don't wanna play Hendrix on a Les Paul. <laughs> Cause it just sounds weird to me. I mean I will if I have to, but you know, right. it's just not my not my favorite thing. So that's probably that and I've also switched to Marshall sounding amps. But mm -hmm. I've always been a big Marshall fan. So. Right. But you used to do more black facey yes. style stuff, right? Yeah. Till so. I played a plexi. That ruined my whole life. <laughs> God. And you built you built that one. Yeah, I did build this amp. So um, um, let's see. If, let's see if we can <laughs> see it here. It's a genuine ostrich. Look at that mug. Three payments. Look at that guy. It's real nice, huh? Hand wired by Mr. Feaster himself, which means it took like I had to build it a couple times for it to get to work. It's my first one though. I'm really proud of it. I'm not gonna lie. It's a clone. You know, I didn't design the circuit. It's an 18 watt Marshall uh, instead of a tremolo. It's three band EQ with a master volume. And then uh, the other channel is just volume and tone like the uh, 2061 circuit. And then I have a switch on there to where you can switch from tube to diode rectification. Yeah, I'm not going to stick the camera under, inside, this, <laughs> inside the chassis. But either. it's there. It's there, trust me. And don't touch the caps. <laughs> <laughs> That's the tip to making them sound good is not, not killing yourself, right? Exactly. And the only reason I had the guts to, to build the amp, to be honest with you, is you can't electro electrocute yourself before electricity is ever introduced to the circuit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so as long as it worked the first, the first time. time yeah, the exactly. problem is it didn't. <laughs> See, well, it did. It turned see, on. Seeped it away and bought a new kit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like, if I ever do buy one, I'm just gonna use the kit mm -hmm. because I, I geeked out, man. I was like, I gotta have classic tone power transformer, murky magnetics output transformer, tube amp doctor caps, right. and then so I, I sourced all the parts from different companies and. I don't know. I think the transformer and the speaker probably made a difference, but mm -hmm. everything else, I bet. Really? As long as it's in tolerance. So minute that it's... Yeah. You know, I mean, who yeah. knows, but I'm not going to do another one. It's a pain in the butt. <laughs> <laughs> well, you went for the three or $4,000. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, it depends on how much time I was allotted. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Brian Taylor wants to know how your, music's, how your music is evolving and how you've evolved as a player. Oh, okay. More song conscious than lick conscious if that makes any sense mm -hmm. like I guess I've just been trying to write a lot <laughs> and I'm getting so into tone again that it's kind of bad you know we make the j the joke make the joke yeah make the joke we make <laughs> we the, make him do everything. <laughs> we make him do everything as long, other than repeat himself <laughs> but um <laughs> but we make the joke more Mel Bay less eBay right I've been totally guilty of that as far as like my new job my my boss is a big time vintage gear guy mm -hmm. so he's always getting this vintage gear and I swear half the time I just play A chords I just go oh that sounds so good oh that sounds so good you know to where I should be playing and mm -hmm. practicing be honest with you I've been playing I got a uh, a Martin what's it called an OM 21 mm -hmm. and it's like the smaller body mm -hmm. Martin and, it, yeah and I've been playing the crap out of that it's like just right, like writing stuff more, yeah more yeah. writing stuff then. yeah that and this guy Mel McCullough built a guitar for me and those two guitars never leave my couch mm -hmm. I always have those readily available and I rarely plug in at home Really? Yeah, but now I got a man cave. <laughs> That's true. You just moved. I, yeah, I just moved, and poor Brian. I live. It took me, I think, eight minutes to drive here. So <laughs> can I, I'm going to say it. When I moved to this town, they gave me a free tractor, a shotgun, and a Donald Trump yard sign. Well, see if you waited. A, <laughs> if you waited a week, you'd catch your own spittoon. So. <laughs> That next week's free spittoon week. <laughs> it's free so. spittoon week. Yeah. No, but I actually I told like you it. on the square on Thursdays we have spit <laughs> spitting contests. Contest. That cracked me up, dude. <laughs> but no, it, it's cool because I was obviously living in, you know, not quite inner city Indianapolis, mm -hmm. but I was living in an area that was, you know, kind of, it wasn't going to get better. I'll right. just put it that way. Right. So it was kind of cool to get down to the to the country and have some land. And and I love the picture that you sent me. <laughs> like the, the day you moved in, it was a picture. I'll have to, I'll have to throw it to Bob. To have it if on not, there. I probably still have and, it. And, <laughs> it's, <laughs> you find a track and like, damn it. The first day. The first day here. <laughs> ain't been here. Ain't been here a week and I'm stuck behind it. And, and it was, wasn't even like a big tractor that somebody was going to go do something with. No. It was just Is it a guy who's like, well, I probably ought to go down yonder. I'm going to get my tractor. <laughs> you know. And I said, welcome to Martin. And, yeah, and he said, funny thing is, that actually is an international harvester. <laughs>
That's funny. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Uh, let's see. Oh, this is a good one. I know the answer, but the three people that watch this might know. <laughs> Uh, what will make me a better player? Practicing diligently, obsessing endlessly over gear, of course, and spending way more money and especially time on said obsessing than practicing. So which is better? Practicing or buying stuff? I didn't know this answer. That's <laughs> Actually, you're gonna, you're gonna disagree with me. I think it's a fine line between basically whatever inspires you to pick up your guitar. Mm -hmm. Because who says practicing has to be, you know, doing all your scales and everything. Mm -hmm. Granted, you have to practice if, I don't care what it is. You know, if it's a sport, you gotta practice to get better. If right. it's guitar, you gotta practice to get better. But at the same time, if you're stuck with the same tone all the time, if you're playing through a little Marshall MG5 or whatever, mm -hmm. little solid state amp, and then you switch to something different and then put like some cool Wumpler pedals in front of it, <laughs> but no, but seriously though, you know, like for instance, how do you say it? ethereal? Ethereal. Ethereal. Yeah. Like if we, I was, ever, if we ever actually do come out with that. <laughs> like I was playing that, and that would if I had something like that, I know I would play guitar for hours on end, and yeah. that would make me play my guitar longer. Mm -hmm. So that's gonna make you better just because it's in your hands. Right. So what's better, not practicing, and I mean, I don't know. I, Does that I make mean, sense. No, it totally makes sense. I mean, I know, like with me personally, I hadn't played for. I mean, I'd played, but not like practiced. Right. Pro uh, I practically, I actually probably started practicing, practicing six months ago. Right. Uh, and That's not, awesome. not like forever. Just, I mean, just making it a having, point having to do a, it. Yeah, I mean, like having a business and stuff. You, and breadboarding, especially, you get really good at like playing three chords and then <laughs> right. no one else everything and playing right. three chords. And at the end of the day, you've had a guitar in your hand. And you're like, I don't. And you haven't done anything. Yeah, you're like I don't like. I'm, I've had this like. Right. I've been playing all. Sorry, it's totally. Spit <laughs> you got all more in your glasses me. than you did me. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I don't even know what I'm saying now. I mean, they just, you know, it's not inspiring to, to really play when you're doing something like that. You know, because it's more exactly. That's, that's more of like painting a picture with. And I will say, and I will say one thing too, and don't get me wrong, I love gear. I love the gear industry and I'm just as much into gear as I ever have been. It's just different gear now. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of been left behind in the boutique market because like we were talking, a lot of it's going, you know, either, either there's another overdrive being built that I just can't keep up. Right. But there are other things like, is it called the Avalanche Run by mm -hmm. Earthquaker? Earthquaker? That looks cool. I'd love to play one of yeah. those. So, I mean, there's, there's things like that that I am kind of keeping up with. Being out of the gear industry for a year, I notice I have played guitar more. Yeah. And we've talked about this. Right. You know, you go home after a day of... After talking about it for 10 hours. Yeah. That last thing you want yeah. to do is pick up exactly. guitar. Exactly. You're talking about a boot. You go to one of these shows and somebody wants you to describe the decibel boost. And you're like, it's a button and a knob. <laughs> it makes it louder. It makes it louder. You know what I mean? And, you know, I say that tongue in cheek, but there's a lot of truth to that. The last thing you want to do is go home and play guitar. Right. You know, it's kind of like working for a different you. Because I'll go to the office and, and my boss will say, hey, check out this guitar I just got. Or check out this pedal I just got. And it's like, it's never anything new. Right. You know, but it's it's it's, it's fun. still something cool. It's still something yeah. cool. So I'm not playing as much new gear as like I did when I worked for you. But I still do get to play new gear. But it's vintage gear. Right. But so but I don't know. But you've been doing, like you were doing like the uh, WTF. Uh, it's called blues. Cause yeah. It's, kinda, it's not like a Muddy Waters blues thing. Right. But, Kind of like Blue John Mayerish kind yeah, of thing, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and now you're doing more of the uh, the '90s rock, the thing. Nirvana thing, right? Yeah, so, right. Well, no, yeah. it's just it's one of those things too. And, and man, I'm gonna sound so pretentious when I say this, but there's no other way to say it. Is I'm very, very, very thankful for the record label that I had mm -hmm. and giving me a shot and get. Without them, I wouldn't have had my third record. Right. You know, it just wouldn't have happened. I couldn't have afforded it. And I mm -hmm. wouldn't have been able to tour the world, yada, yada, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. That's pretentious stuff. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, once you do that, it changes everything. And then it's a business. And you're constantly thinking about, I got to write a new song. I got to market this record. I got to do this, that, and the other thing. You start worrying more about business and less exactly. about... Exactly. Plan. And it got to the point, literally, to where some I'd book a big blues festival and I'd be pumped. That'd be so high on that. Higher on that than actually playing the Blues Festival. Right. And that's when I realized I need to back off. Mm -hmm. And then... Your priorities got out of focus. Right. Almost. Exactly. And then I'm really lucky. I started playing guitar in 1996. Green Day was big. Nirvana. Mm -hmm. All that stuff was really easy But there's to play. a lot of guitar in music. Right. Exactly. <laughs> but so it was one of those things. Now I go back and I listen to that stuff. And I was like, I ought to start a band. Mm -hmm. And one of my childhood friends just moved back up north from 
uh, Knoxville, uh, Tennessee, and he has the voice that's just perfect for that style of music. Yeah, so. he does sound really good. Doesn't he? Yeah. I mean, he just sounds he legit. Sounds, uh, yeah, exactly. He doesn't sound like a guy covering those songs. He sounds like a guy that could have been in one of those bands. Right. <laughs> you, you, you think our kids are like, in, you know, whenever they're our age, they're going to like start a Drake cover band or anything like that? I hope so. <laughs> I'm going to go on record and say Hotline Bling is a killer tune. I love it, dude. I, I like that Mike, what's it, Mike Posner, uh, Take a Pill and a Visa? Yeah, that's a good one. That is a good one. So. But that my favorite part about that Drake song is the very beginning where he just goes, like it, he just goes, yeah. <laughs> this is the best part. We'll have to put that in there, Bojo. Here. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. He wrote, they spent hours right <laughs> It's like, you gotta get the yeah in the perfect spot. Because they started saying yo, like, yeah. nah. something's missing. It's kind of it's kind of like you wonder if like when they were the Beatles were writing if somebody was like, okay here it goes she loved you ooh 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 and then maybe Paul's like no let's say yeah 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 <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> what Drake was thinking <laughs> exactly to a T <laughs> to a T Drake <laughs> Drake <laughs> total concept pickups love them like. Okay, I've always been, speakers and pickups, mm -hmm. to me, are one of those things to where it's going to sound better to you because you took all the time to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, or you forget what it sounded like before, and then after you do it, it always sounds better. Right. You know, so there is some of that. But that being said, I actually sat down, and it wasn't professional, it was just on my phone. Mm -hmm. I recorded the same settings and everything with one guitar, and then I recorded the ones with the new pickups. Mm -hmm. And the first set that David made me was such a specialty set that it sounded night and day different than anything else. Basically, he took it was single coils. Those aren't single coils. I know. Well, I'm in Martin's. <laughs> I'm in Martinsville now. Single coils. Single coils. But anyways, they were reverse staggered. Mm -hmm. So instead of being E A D G B E. Mm -hmm. You know, it was flipped around so right. the A and the B strings were totally different. Mm -hmm. And then I mounted them in a, in a guitar instead of, you know, how Strat mm -hmm. Bridge Pickup does that. Yep. It's called the Voodoo Pick Guard or whatever, mm -hmm. to where you mount it that way. Really? So basically, it's the exact same thing as playing left-handed. Right. So everything electronically is upside down. The only thing that's not is the headstock wasn't right. reversed. Right. So I put those in a guitar and... Um, you sound like Steve, or not Steve Ray, but uh, Jimi Hendrix? I did. I didn't. <laughs> but no, it is. there is something there though when you plug that into like a Univibe and then go into a 68 well, yeah, plexi I mean, cranked. It's, yeah. It's convincing. Right. So like... it now That's going to make a dramatic difference for it, your pickup. Exactly. So, so that's what I mean. It was so drastic. Then I, I was putting together my first ever Squire. I love that guitar. He, he sent me a message. He's like, hey, I got a set of pickups I want to send you to put in there. And uh, so... I put them in that guitar, and they they sounded awesome. And they were like straight up blues rock. They had right. that like mid range throaty growl that I had to take them out and put them in a nicer guitar. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I've got I've got three sets of those, man. I'm a firm believer. Mm -hmm. The only guitar that doesn't have them in there is my Grosh, and that's just because I'm not saying that it wouldn't sound better, but I like that guitar, right. and I don't want to. I don't want to yeah. mess with I've it. I've got a you know, telecast like that over there where I don't. I don't want to change the pickup. So right. I'm that's that hundred percent happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I do have like that Strat that I broke the neck off. Actually, you made me break that damn. <laughs> <laughs> you were afraid you were going to tear it up. <laughs> that Strat, uh, I have those Tone of Concept pickups in it. I li love that a lot. And there's yeah. a blend on the mid, too. I think uh, I think it blends in, what's it do? Blend in the mid pickup? Mid pickup, or probably, Something yeah. like that. But, uh, the but I only, since I only use the bridge in the neck, right. I never use it. So. And, <laughs> and here's the thing, too. And I, and I hope I don't make any but pickup sounds... manufacturers mad. Because I like a lot of guys. Like David Allen's great. Mm -hmm. He makes great pickups. I like his songs, too. Yeah. Well, that's their down cold. Never mind. <laughs> But the thing is with, with David at Tonal Concepts is it's like people want the boutique pickups and everything. And it's like you cannot get more boutique than calling a guy and say, hey, I, I mean, there's a difference between boutique and custom. Mm -hmm. You know, completely custom is when you call a guy and say, hey, man, I want this sound. And, and then he'll start talking about that form bar wire, 42 gauge copper uh, bobbins. And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. If I you knew, know. I'd make the right. <laughs> But no, I mean, the guy like, and don't think it's the wrong way, but like if I start, if I knew enough to get into it with you on the geeky electronic side, you could totally geek out. And there's something cool about that because the dude knows his stuff. You know your stuff. Same thing with David. He knows his stuff and knows how to relate it to guitar tones. Right. And the funny thing is too, is he knows his history because a friend of mine was going to get some, he's got a 
59 Strat neck, mm -hmm. and he built a guitar around. He he had David do some 59 style pickups, and he was like, "Well, I'm 59, but and, and November 59 they change it. So do you want early 59 or late?" And he like knew all this stuff, and it wasn't like it wasn't like I emailed him and he had time to research it. Mm -hmm. Like he just knew he it just off the top of his head. head. Yeah. So it's like that's my thing. It's every set is scatter wound. You know, he sits there and monitors the machine while he does it, mm -hmm. and to his exact specs, and you can get them completely custom. So that's cool. I really do think that makes a difference. I mean. Kind of like with, with the Velvet Fuzz. That was meant to just be something fun. And I was like, oh my God, that's the fuzz tone I like. I thought you were just building me a one-off. <laughs> it sounded and, good. Man. Yeah, right? <laughs> and so I was like, dude, I got Brian Wampler to make me a custom paddle. <laughs> you know, and that's how I feel every time yeah. that David makes pickups for me. Is I, I got this guy to build me a set of custom pickups, you know? Mm -hmm. it's There's something cool about that. That is cool. So... There's a commercial for you. <laughs> <laughs> but that he's a, he's a good dude. Yeah, he, he actually is a good guy, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and not everybody in this industry is, so. <laughs> <laughs> no Go name. buy 50 sets of his pickups. Um, this guy just says lace sensor pickups, but I don't, I'm not sure what John's talking about. So, um, John, Michelle. Uh, oh, that's John I've, and Michelle. Got it. Lace sensor pickups. Yeah. I, like them? I've only played them in that Clapton Strat. I haven't played them for Tons of yeah, years. I can't, I, I can't speak. I don't know. I mean, I imagine okay. you can do anything. I mean, Dave, uh, David Gilmore used them, right? For a yes, while. Yep. Yeah. So, can't argue with so, that. So, I'll wrap this up. If you want to answer this, you can. If you don't want to answer it, you don't have to. Okay. Everyone has asked this so many times. Okay. I'm tired of lying to people. <laughs> tired of, I can't take the line. Okay. What are you doing now? <laughs> okay. And why don't you still work now? It's, it's, what what do you, you know? What what job could possibly be better than talking about uh, guitar pedals all the time? Okay, so basically, I'm in sales. I'm a sales guy. It's gonna sound way cooler than what it is. Actually, it's really cool. I mean, I love what you I did do. You did talk to celebrity, which is I did. I've talked to a too. couple celebrities, yeah. and but um, <laughs> no, it's uh, you don't get to hang with all your favorite guitar players though, mm -hmm. which. I will always miss that. Do you guys have a NAM of any sort? To go? <laughs> yeah, it's called a NBAA, and it's in Vegas. Mm -hmm. I'm a broker, kind of like a real estate broker. It's very there's a lot of parallels, but instead of houses, it's jet aircraft, corporate aircraft specializing in citations. Gotcha. There, there you go. So, and and there's more money <laughs> in, in that industry, which makes you not broker. So. <laughs> well, oh, broker, I see what you did. See, the don't bucket of beans. <laughs> But no, so I mean, I'm an aircraft broker. <laughs> See, it sounds cooler than it is. You need your, you need a picture on a billboard. <laughs> yeah, because people driving down the street will see a billboard and be like, I do need a jet aircraft. <laughs> I knew I've been missing that. <laughs> I was just but thinking yesterday what I could do with it. <laughs> okay, so let me be straight. I'm learning how to be an aircraft broker. There's a long way to go. I don't want to make anybody think that you could just pick this up in a year and be like, I know what I'm doing. Yeah, that seems like it's not yeah. one of the things you're like. This so is a long-term plan, yeah. you know. Basically, right now, I help my boss, you know. But right. I mean, and, and it's a, it's an industry that I'm learning. And for instance, I know that uh, is it Brad Jackson of Jackson Airports? I think so. That's his mm -hmm. name, I think. I know he flies Citations, so he's a pilot. Really? Yeah. I didn't know mm -hmm. that. Yeah. So I mean, there's there's some people in the industry mm -hmm. that that uh, that skill. Vince Gill, does he have an airplane? I think so. Does he? I can find he has out. a shirt with an airplane on it. Does I saw, I saw it <laughs> so, so, yeah, I mean, there's not a lot of music. The one thing I will say is all these rappers rapping about G6s, mm -hmm. none of them have G6s. <laughs> you verified that. I verified that. I did verify. Unless like maybe the they're G6s. using, di yeah, unless they're using different names. Right. You know, because I don't know if Little Wayne, that's like actually his real name. <laughs> I did. I don't know. It's like I'm gonna call you Lil. <laughs> so, but no, you never know. They may be, or they may be under a different business name. But it's not a lot of G6s out there. The no, that's place. true. That's true. Yeah, what did you so, say? Forty million for this? Depends on the condition and everything. But all right, <laughs> check. Write you check. Write you check when we get back to the house. <laughs> all right, man. So thanks for stopping by and you know, come back or don't. Sometimes. You know? <laughs> or, do, or don't. Or don't. I'll drink your beer. There you go. Okay, it says it got, I can't. So I got four. What do you got? Well, nothing now, but I had a bunch. Yeah, it's like they all disappeared. I don't have the Wii Fi though. It's not doing too awful much for me.